Hey guys, girls, gals, whatever. <laughs> this this is Uncle Bonehead. Just wanted to show this off real quick. I am so excited about this. Um, you you know I'm a big Linux user, and what you're looking at right here on the screen is Pop OS 2204. I've been using it for a little over two weeks now for work and play and it's absolutely phenomenal there's no other words to describe it i was a you know, big on arch linux guy and ubuntu mate and elementary os in the past and you know over the years it's usually either arch or an ubuntu derivative that i've been into um I've, I've, since I've got this computer, thank you, Ron. Um, it is absolutely amazing. And I started off with MX Linux on it. And MX was good. Um, it, it just, I don't know, there was just something weird about it that it was just randomly shut off for no reason. Thought it was something to do with the processor, it was reseated wrong. Or thought maybe the RAM was seated wrong, but nope. I've reseated everything. Everything's good. MX just, I think it was because it was something to do with the kernel when I was running on it. Um, so I started running Arch and other Arch and Arch derivatives. My favorite Arch that I ran on this was Endeavor OS. If you're looking for an i3 window manager implementation out of the box that's just ready to go looks good works good you can't beat endeavor os it is absolutely beautiful and works great but arch has got problems you know that i've, I've you you really gotta like playing with your computer and your os to run arch um because all it takes is an update or something that slips by you and you not realize it and you can't boot which is fine that's you know that's what you like to do is play with that play around with your computer that much go for it i used to be that way i'm not that way anymore i just want something that's going to work when i need it to work and something that i don't have to keep playing with unless i want to play with it and that's where pop os falls in um i got i'm I've, i'm gonna credit it's rogue Ren with this vtuber rogue Ren is fucking awesome he is an absolutely cool ass dude like i said he is a vtuber if you're into that kind of thing go check definitely go check out it's rogue Ren's channel and his twitch and his channel on youtube he's also got a discord server he is the one i've for a long time, I've had issues with Pipewire. Could not get it to work worth a shit for what I wanted to do with it. Ren and his Discord server are the ones that got me to understand it and helped me out to get it to work the way that I wanted. There is also a plugin that's coming that is already available for OBS, but and it's supposed to be merged in to OBS so that's going to help a lot of people using Pipewire and OBS to stream with excuse me um, but anyways I digress Pop OS dude this is fantastic 2204 it's been going solid on my machine for both of my machines for, for two weeks straight and I'm going to stay here. It's, everything is simple. It's dead stupid simple to use. Um, this is a custom wallpaper that I I made. The uh, I found the base wallpaper. It had an Ubuntu sim logo in the middle. And I just basically took out the Ubuntu logo and put in Pop OS because it just, it just looks cooler. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. Pop OS is fantastic. Um, mainly because my favorite thing, I think, is the tiling windows feature up here. It's a GNOME 42 extension. 
and, and by the way, it does run GNOME 42 and Pipeware by default on 2204. Um, I don't know when, but they are making their own desktop environment out of Rust. Everybody knows that. And I hope to hell it's got all the same features in it that's in this one right here. Because if they switch over to it and it doesn't have all these features, I'm going to be really pissed. And I'll probably throw a, a shit fit and and go back to Arch. But anyway, I digress. This this is so cool. You, you, you know, if you want to tile windows, you just flip that little switch right there. And then you can tile as many windows as you want. Yeah, and just keep going. And you're going to see them popping off the screen because I'm on a dual monitors here but they you just you know super cue to kill them all and you know that's beautiful you could also you can set your change your gaps I've got mine set to two because I like to maximize the the the, uh, the windows I only want to be able to see the active hint if you don't want the active hint you can turn it off you can also show the window titles whether you want them you know, um, you can toggle the tiling on and off by using Super Y. You navigate through the windows using Super and the arrow keys. Launcher is the Super still. Um, floating windows exceptions. You can set your own windows exceptions that you want to be floating, like this one. The floating means that it just you, you can move it around. But it, it's just awesome. You can change the the hint color. I've got it set to the default. I I went. I'll be honest. I, I used it for a week on the the uh, the stock default theme and icons and everything. And I was like, okay, this is kind of boring. I'm going to switch over to uh, uh, a different theme. I installed Dracula and a couple others. Used it for like a day, and I'm like. No, <laughs> I, I actually like the default pop theming a lot better. So I set everything back to the default. The icons I was using was um, uh, Tila Circle Purple and Tila Circle Dracula. And I didn't, I liked them, but they weren't all that great. But I mean, it's the pop, the pop theme just it works it's it's if you want a a distro that you can just log in you know install log in set up your online accounts and go do some work this is it right here um take a look at the settings real quick it's your basic default gnome settings um you got your network your bluetooth your your desktop here this is where you control your options your, for your launcher, your workspaces, applications. That's your super key button. You can change it. See, this is the launcher. You, you know, then you just type in a, the name of an app, Amber All. And it pops up and you hit, and it opens. You can change your backgrounds here. You know, just like in regular old GNOME. Here's your appearance. You've only got two themes by default. The light and dark Pop! OS themes. If you're going to change themes to a different theme, you got to install the Tweaks application and change it through there, GNOME Tweaks. Um, you can set your dock so that it either shows on the bottom or the left or the right of the screen. All displays are the primary display. It can intelligently hide and always visible, you know, all that stuff. Extend the dock to the edges of the screen or you can show a launcher icon, workspaces icon, blah, 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 blah. Then you can change, you know, set your default workspaces. I've got them set to dynamic, so it'll create a new new workspace for whatever I want. And you do that just by the super and control button and down arrow button. And right now it's only going to have the two workspaces because I've only got two apps open. So if I went down there and I opened up, uh, let's say we opened up Nautilus. Okay, then we, you know, go do another workspace and then I've still got Nautilus in so anyways continuing on on our settings here we've got the applications is for like all your permissions and stuff like that um, 
privacy, whether or not you want your uh, connectivity watched, your location, Thunderbolt, file hosting and trash and all that, or file history and trash. Um, where are we at here? Sharing our online accounts. You've got Google, IMAP, Nextcloud, Microsoft account, Flickr, Foursquare, Microsoft Exchange, Last FM. Uh, this, this is just cool as hell. I've got IMAP and SMT set up. I've got two my work email and my work Gmail and my regular uh, Google Mail set up so that I can get up here into my calendar. I can show my events that I've got scheduled for, for all my calendars. My weather is set up. My email notifications. I've also got uh, GS Connect on both the work phone and my phone, but I have it shut off right now because I don't want notifications going on while I'm recording this. But it, they're so it's so dead simple to, to set these these up. I mean, it's just it's so freaking awesome. I when I when I first installed Pop OS, installed it, did the updates, made every, made sure everything was up to date, and then I went and set up my my two Google accounts and my email accounts and dude I was boom I was ready to work in like 30 minutes total install and hooking everything up it just totally blew my mind uh, here's the sharing you could change you know this is your computer name by default it's pop OS all the time I've got another computer over here to my uh, right, and it's it's uh, running Pop OS 2. I called it. I had to change the name of it after. I'll show you that here in a little bit. How to do that? I changed the name to Little Pop OS, and this one is just regular Pop OS. Um, but yeah, you can file share. You can remote desktop. You can media sharing. Turn these all on and off. Uh, file sharing, you do have to install something, a library or something like that, before the, it will show up on here. It's not here by default, but it's so freaking awesome. You don't have them. Oh, it's just freaking beautiful. And then this is, you know, the 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 sound. It's showing all of my OBS stuff that's going on right now because OBS is open. My default output device. And my default input device, which is my audio box, 90, USB 96. Um, you can set your power settings. I don't have any power settings on that because this is a disc, uh, desktop, not a laptop. So I've got that stuff to stay on, all the screens to stay on all the time, unless I lock the computer. Um, it, would tell, it even tells me my wireless keyboard batteries. Um, this is your displays. I've got two di two displays, and you can you know you can do all your standard stuff in there. Mouse, touchpad. Like I said, I don't have it's not a keyboard so, or it's not a laptop, so I don't have a touchpad. There's my keyboard. Um, you can set custom shortcuts here. There's much already set up. I left them all at default. Um, I didn't did not change anything. The keyboard shortcuts I'm, I'm doing fine with just what they've got I uh, it automatically picks, picked up my printer here on the Wi-Fi and set your removal media of what you want to do with that color profiles for your for your monitors and your cameras that you have and your office jet um, firmware this is for system 76 computers um since this is not a system 76 computer there is no managed firmware right here you set your region and language your accessibility if you need those they're there uh here's your users it's very easy to create a new user you just unlock it add a user put in their name and password and all that um set your default applications i changed my uh browser to brave for the default 
It comes with Firefox, but you can install Brave, Chrome, whatever you want from the Pop Shop. Um, I use Brave because for me, Brave is the fastest in and out for browsers. It doesn't track me. It doesn't track all the other crap. And it's just, it's astounding. I love it. Um, uh, let's see here. Gary, Gary is the default email. I just left it. I used it because it's, it's working with everything. I don't need to screw around with anything. Um, it's, it just works. It doesn't, doesn't, you know, do a RSS feeds or anything like that. Like, Thunderbird does, but that's fine. I've got an, another app called Feeds that I use for RSS feeds. Um, Calendar is it works just fine, works right along with it, with Geary and the online accounts. So that's great. I changed my music player to Amberall because Amberall is just an absolutely fantastic, beautiful, beautiful um, music player. You can't beat it. Um, VLC is my default video player. It's got a different uh, video player that's default. I switched it to VLC. And then the default image viewer here. Um, you can set your date and time. The OS upgrade and recovery. Now this, this is interesting. Um, it's different from other gnome implementation stuff um it says i'm running the the most current pop os version but i've got a recovery partition it automatically sets that up for you and then you can refresh the os from the recovery partition and that is phenomenal that is awesome more distros need to do that um you can also turn on automatic updates and set them for when you want them to do it. Uh, and you can show the update notifications. Was it daily, weekly, or monthly, or something like that? But uh, for support, you can, it's, this says model, model and version. I have no idea why that says that. And that's, that's because it's not a System76 laptop or, or desktop which I would love to have. Anyways, I digress. Uh, the operating system there, and then it gives you a link to, to check, browse the documentation, and then a, you can join the Pop! OS chat, which is a Mattermost. Is it Mattermost? Yeah, I think it's Mattermost. And then create log archives for support. You can create the log files to send to them if they, you know, want to help you and ask you about them and then your simple about stuff here this is about your machine my memory is 16 gigs it's amd 5 6 core processor with 12 threads amd radeon rx 560 series graphics terabyte disc i don't know why that says it's a terabyte disc because it's not <laughs> i've got two 500 gigabyte SSD cards in the machine and then I've also got a terabyte external hard drive plugged into the machine so I'm guessing it's reading the total of the two SSDs I don't know why it says a terabyte but it's not this drive is only 500 gigs um yeah 64 bit 42.2 GNOME version and it's running x11 instead of Wayland. So that's the tour of the settings. I mean, it's just absolutely awesome. You want to get to see what the applications are. Press Super and A. And it brings up your applications. You can scroll through them all. You've got folders. And you create your own folders. Huh, excuse me. Yawning. Hit escape to get out of that. Um, open a terminal, Super T, and this is my NeoFetch. That NeoFetch is not installed by default. You've got to add that yourself. Um, but this is the default uh, GNOME terminal that they use. The only thing I changed on it was the colors. 
for the profile and the transparency. I, it's that's it. Other than that, it's it's stock. I'm 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 loving this. This is absolutely awesome. See if you turn the tiling off, then you open the terminal. See the difference. Open another one. And another one. 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 See how they stack on top of each other. You don't get that with the tiling. And that's what I like the most. I did I did do uh, install this. It's kind of kind of cool, <laughs> and I also did. Uh, I think it'll show up if I do this. Here, see if it'll work. Of course, it opens on the router screen. You guys can't hear it. You might hear it through the microphone. But this is a really cool, it's basically a terminal app. Um, but it, it it's, makes it look like it's, you know, uh, a hacker thing from like the movie Tron or whatever. It's just something that's cool you can play around with. It, it, it's it's freaking awesome it's cool but it's just <laughs> bling let me show you an extension real quick for the last here this is called burn my windows and it's cool now just watch <laughs> it's gonna be kind of flicky and laggy because of the OBS is running but you know you can you can open up something like this here and boom and then you can close it I don't want it that big but just close it it's just cool something cool to make it make some fun so I digress do you guys Go check out Pop OS if you're if you're into Linux distros, and it's it's very pleasant. It, it, it is very nice. I like it. We'll see you guys again next time. Be good. Be safe. Never stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your face. I'll talk to you later. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. You probably noticed this. Lightworks. I I am using Lightworks. Um, I need to shut that extension off because <laughs> as much as the bling is and can, eye candy is cool it gets annoying but anyways this is Lightworks and it is a video editor and it's very cool um, I am I did pay for the uh, I think it's ten dollars a month the upgrade for the Lightworks create pro and this video and most of the videos in the last month and a half have been done on Lightworks. Um, I, I paid for the for the upgrade to the to create from the free version because I want to export the 1080p instead of 720. And it's got there's a bunch of you know effects already done are already been created by the community that you can use and dude it just works good it just works good so i'll do a review on lightworks later but yeah now we're done <laughs> we'll see you